Apostolic churches today, you walk in some of them, there's more beards in there than there are out in the street. I'm going to tell you something. Facial hair is not apostolic. However you want to cut it, it's compromise. I don't care if your leader says you can wear a beard, honey. Beard's nothing more than pride. You're not going to be dipped in Holy Ghost oil and run around looking like the world. We don't need beards. We need more oil. We need more Joe ashes. We need more people in an altar. We need more prayer rooms. We need more people digging into the things of God. You can look in the recipe of anointing. You'll never find beards, Brother Epley. You can look in the recipe of anointing. You're never going to find television. You can look in the recipe of anointing, and you're not going to find compromise. You can look in the recipe of anointing, and women are going to be covering their knees. In the recipe of anointing, and women are going to be covering their knees. Brother John here. All right. How you doing? Hey, guys. So, I'm listening to this. Absolute nut bar. Have you ever heard of this whole concept? They call it modalist, all right? So, a modalist, like, like they, they, it's amazing to me that these guys are holding Bibles and coming up with the most blasphemous false teaching you can ever imagine. Oh, the police are here. All right, so the whole idea is that, okay, so for an example, I guess, like, so Jesus, he got baptized in the book of Matthew. I think it's Matthew 3 and by John the Baptist, all right? So Jesus comes up and he's like, look, look, there's a dove, eh? And all the disciples look and uh, Jesus is like a ventriloquist, eh? He's like, this is my son. So is that what is that is that what's going on here? All right, no. Okay, so we serve a real God. Christ Jesus is our Lord and the Father. One second, we're gonna... One second, eh? All right. Sorry about that. All right, so the whole concept was, good morning, eh? Here in Canada, I'm a street minister, eh? <laughs> Here, I'll take my glasses off. So, this is the RCMP. They're rousting, we got homeless camps everywhere. Here it is, here. They're the police, eh? <laughs> I fit on, you know, I have it on the street. So this character is saying that, uh, something about. I'm gonna tell you something, facial hair is not apostolic. However you want to cut it, it's compromise. You can look at the recipe of anointing and women are going to be covering their knees. You know, women better not show their knees or some crazy local. You know, when I'm on the street, you know, the worst gang member drug dealing, okay, pimp or prostitute or thief can't do the damage that these absolute heretics do in front of a pulpit spanned across the world. Anyways, uh, we're going to look at this video and uh, modalism, forgive me. <laughs> so modalism, so who is Jesus praying to, all right? You know, like, how could you be a Christian and come up with this concept that somehow there's no Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God eternal? There's like, anyways, Jesus is not a evangelicalist. We serve a real God. Christ Jesus is our Lord, okay? And that's why Jesus came to the earth, okay? Because the Father sent him, all right? And if you read... Looks like there's uh, been a robbery here. You know, I live, the building I live in has got a liquor store in the same building and a casino in the next parking lot. But, one second. How you doing? Good, man. Someone broke in or? The liquor store is closed temporarily. Did, did they actually get in or no? Yep. They did, eh? Yep. Great job. God bless. Thank you. No, I have nothing but good. Here's the store here. Love the action. Bless you.
Welcome to the Heresy of the Word Exposed Deceptions, Lies, and Blasphemous Teachings with the Light of the Lord, the Bible, and the Love of Common Sense. Estoy escuchando mi música. Yes, es cubano. Fue para mi luna de miel dentro de la ciudad. Verdadero. Havana? Verdadero? I went to Verdadero in my honeymoon to Cuba. And uh, it has the most beautiful beaches I've ever been to in my life was in Cuba. And I like listening to the Spanish music. All right, so I had a hard time with the Spanish uh, the Cuban Spanish, because they speak uh, very hard slang, but uh, obviously I speak Spanish. If you want Bible College in Mexico City, if you're new to my channel, good morning. I just got up. All right, what are we doing today? We are looking at, um, here it is here. Wait a second, I got to turn this off here. All right, here we go. This is it here. First Pentecostal Church. Now, when I was doing the research for this video, this is going to be a, I learned a lot in this video. Um... This is a guy, okay, I came across his Facebook post. My sleep was disturbed and my spirit was still vexed after watching Reverend Stephen Buxton. All right, so this is the character that is telling women how to dress and men not to wear beards because it's some type of pride. You know, it's interesting, the Apostle Paul or any of the disciples wouldn't be allowed to preach in that church, okay? But he's come up with this idea that um, somehow wearing a beard is prideful. We're going to look at it all today and how did this all... Is it, this is called legalism, okay? It's, these, these are... Um, well, we're going to get to it. Arkansas International Camp, Campground, Pentecostal, Sunday message of the facial hair. Now, I come from the Pentecostals, all right? I was born and baptized in the Pentecostal church. And uh, my grandma, actually, it's called the POC, Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada, uh, was in the graduate class as well as this morning. I was listening to Pastor David Wilkson, all right? So I come from the Pentecostals, but I love everybody, and uh, I don't push a Pentecostal agenda on my channel. I pre preach and teach simple Christianity, and I don't care what denomination or church you're in. I think everyone should get back to simple Christianity. I'm going to hell and don't have a relationship with God because I have a beard? Really? If I didn't know better, I would walk away from the church, okay? And this guy was just venting about this whole concept that because you're wearing a beard... And uh, he's pretty upset about it. I figured up, uh, and you know, the damage that these people have done to countless lives. Could you imagine I was reflecting this morning, if you were born into this, this is called a sect. Okay, it's not, I wouldn't consider it a cult, but a Christian sect. I'm going to leave a link in the description. It's very interesting. And this whole idea that a sect claims that additional writings are inspired by God. So this whole concept that, like literally Jesus wouldn't even be allowed to preach in this guy's church. And these poor women, all right? You know, if you were a daughter or if you were born into this and now you got to follow their rules, it really is quite sad, you know. And, we're, I, you know, I have swipe my channel, you know, people that are escaping these Christian sects and even Christian cults, that we are praying for these poor people. Okay, there is freedom in Christ Jesus our Lord, all right? All right, so let's look at this. Who is this character? This is a church, all right? They got a humongous, beautiful church. It's called the First Pentecostal Church of Little Rock, all right? We'll get to the sermon in a second. Here's, these are the responsible for this whole fiasco, leadership. Bishop Joel Holmes and Pastor Nathan Holmes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's, and I find that it's um, very, I don't know if they're, it sounds like they're the, probably the same family. It's the same with Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, or the Seventh-day Adventists. They all come from the Millerites. These different Christian cults or Christian sects, typically you're born into it. And why are you a, a Lutheran? Or why are you a Pentecostal? Why are you a Catholic? Or... A lot of churches, you, you're growing up in it and you're ingrained into the, into the teaching of, or why are you a Jehovah's Witness, okay? Or why are you a Mormon? Well, I was born into the Mormon faith. I'm fourth generation Mormon, and now I'm a high priestess of the Mormon religion, okay? And it, it, I don't know for sure, but they do have the last same, the Holmes, same name. Anyways, here it is. It. You know, we pray that, you know, it would be great if they can escape these these satanic deceptions here it is here our belief in capsule now this is when i came across like what are this is all about what are, what are they talking about we believe that jesus is the name of the father the son of the holy ghost now they're quoting matthew 28 19 that's a great commission jesus said to his disciples he says all right go now make disciples of all nations baptized in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit teaching them all i have commanded you and behold i am with you to the very end all right so if I were to talk to these guys, I'm like, haven't you read Matthew 28, 19? They literally, and that's where spiritual deception is. They can't see the truth. You know, they can't. And that's how deception works. When you're inside of the deception, you can't see the truth. Anyways, we believe that Jesus is a name. So they don't, they believe in what's called modalism, that somehow 
the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, when it manifests, is one mode, okay? They don't believe in distinct difference. So, like, when Jesus was, it, which is just a bizarre thing to me. I don't, I can't wrap my head around how anyone could believe this. We believe that salvation is a free gift to all who repent of their sins, are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so if you love Jesus, you would obey him. And Jesus commanded us to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christianity is quite simple. And we are, and are, now listen to this, and are filled with the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Okay, so that's what they believe. Now, interesting enough, the Bible says here, this is 1 Corinthians 12, it's concerning the spiritual gifts, and God sent some to, to the church, first apostles, Secondly, prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, the gift of healings, help government, helps government, diverse of tongues. Okay, now here it is here. Are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracle? No. Have all the gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? No. Okay. Do all interpret? No. But couple the earnestly the best gifts that shoo <laughs> I into more and more excellent way okay so I want to just talk a little bit about this whole concept of the modalism and at the beginning of this video I talked about this is the Bible verse I used and Jesus when he was baptized this is John the Baptist all right went up straight away out of the water and lo the heavens were open unto him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove praise the Lord okay the Holy Spirit and lighting upon him let and a, low, a voice from heaven, okay, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. In the beginning of this, I said, like, Jesus is not a ventriloquist. Somehow he's, like, pulling some sort of con job on the disciples by saying, Look, look, there's a dove, eh? <laughs> okay. And the doves, and all the disciples look over at the dove, and Jesus out of the corner of his mouth said, This is my Son, who I am well pleased. No, okay. We serve a real God. Christ Jesus our Lord, okay. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God eternal. This is the beginning of Matthew, Matthew 3, okay? Now, quite clearly, it's very, you know, like, where to even begin with this whole concept of modalism, okay? Who was Jesus praying to? Yeah, the Father, okay? And who was promised to us? The Holy Spirit. I'm just going to quote one scripture, John 16, 13, but when he, the Spirit, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will only speak of what he hears and tell you what is yet to come. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, okay? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God eternal. It, it, it doesn't get any more simpler than that. All right. So let's just get in this video. And uh, here it is here. Let's start with one of the most bizarre videos I've ever heard because, well, let's just get into it. Here it is here. I'd like to turn your attention tonight to the book of First Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 27. I will be reading one verse. Okay, so I put myself through listening to this whole disaster fiasco sermon this guy is calling a sermon. And when he says that he literally is only reading one verse, this is the verse, all right? We'll get to the video in a second. This is probably one of the most bizarre things I've ever heard in my life. And the king's treasure of Osmoth, the son of... I have a hard time with the fancy words, all right? I, I'm undereducated. I'm, I'm not a very good reader guy. And I, um, I have dyslexia as well. So forgive me. You want to go in a back alley, all right? I'm very good with the, the, the street guys and the gangs and the violence and the guns and the knives, all right? But when it comes to fancy words, I have a hard time spelling. And over the storehouse in the field, the cities and in the villages and in the castles was Joham, the son of Uzzah. And over them, they did the work of the field for tillage of the ground was Ezer, and son of Egypt. And over the, vi the vineyards was Shimonim, the Ramanthinthir. Over the increase of the vineyards was the wine cellars of Zepet, the Zephinimit. And over the olive trees and the sycamore tree. Now, here it is here. This is the verse. Literally, the guy literally quoted. Okay, we're going to get to it. Sycamore trees. And were the low plains of Balhand and Gedarin. And over the cellars of the oil was Joshua. Now, literally, literally, I put myself to this torturous sermon. The guy is screaming inside of his. He, he got so 
worked up. He had to take his coat off. Screaming oil of Johash. The whole entire sermon. He used one verse. He didn't even use the full verse. He used, literally used four words and just went on and on and on about the oil in the cellars of Johash. He does a parable. I'm not going to play it. It's like over an hour, right? About how oil is a, uh, is an expensive commodity. And then he, he used those four let words and just screamed into the microphone. And then he started, and then he started screaming. You know, you'd have to go listen to the whole thing. I don't recommend it, but uh, listen to it one more time. And then I'm going to let you listen to, in all fairness to this character, we'll listen to a little bit of it, and then uh, we're going to read the Bible. I'd like to turn your attention tonight to the book of First Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 27. I will be reading one verse. First Chronicles 27, beginning in verse 28. All right, so you can go listen to the whole thing if you want. I'm going to let you listen to this um, for a little while, and then uh, I'll be right back to read the Bible. Bless you. Complacency. He made a vow it's not going to be corrupted with compromise. He made a vow it's not going to be wasted by worldliness. He made a vow I'm not going to waste it by popularity. He made a vow I'm not going to allow it to be stolen by apathy. I'm going to pray it down and I'm going to keep it flowing. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm not going to let an enemy of the cross steal it. I'm not going to let postmodernism steal it. I'm not going to let a charismatic movement steal it. I'm not going to let a liberal element steal it. I'm not going to let backsliding steal it. I've got to preserve the aisle. Clap your hands with me. I'm more through than you know. I gotta watch the oil. Sad to say, but all around the globe of Pentecost, there's a lot of tainted oil flowing in churches. Let me preach my message tonight. Sad to say I've lived long enough to see men go casually to the bucket and dip enough to get through another service. Sad to say I've seen enough churches that know how to put their shout on on Sunday. But they're far from God come Monday night. Sad, I'm going to preach a little while. Sad to say they've learned how to project themselves uh, across the internet. Uh, but inside they're filled with dead men's bones. Uh, let me preach to you. They've learned how to shout. Uh, they've learned how to talk in tongues. Uh, they've learned how to look apostolic. Uh, but the drum is hollow. And there's not that Jerusalem ring. Uh, and the sound is off. Uh, and you can't feel nothing around them. Uh, I want to preach to you. Thank God for every blessing. Uh, but somewhere we got to hold on to the recipe of old time religion, old time anointing, old time Holy Ghost, old time oil, and somebody's going to say, I'm going to protect it with everything. <laughs> Society doesn't even know what it is. You said it this morning with Adams. Some pre-court justices don't even know how to define a woman. Come on, don't get quiet on me. I'm just getting to my message. It won't be long. Apostolic churches today, you walk in some of them, there's more beards in there than there are out in the street. I'm going to tell you something. Facial hair is not apostolic. However you want to cut it, it's compromise. I don't care if your leader says you can wear a beard, honey. Beard's nothing more than pride. You're not going to be dipped in Holy Ghost oil and run around looking like the world. We don't need beards. We need more oil. We need more Joe ashes. We need more people in an altar. We need more prayer rooms. We need more people digging into the things of God. You can look in the recipe of anointing. You'll never find beards, Brother Epley. You can look in the recipe of anointing. You're never going to find television. You can look at the recipe of anointing, and you're not going to find compromise. You can look in the recipe of anointing, and women are going to be covering their knees. You can look in the recipe of anointing, and men are... All right, so, you know, I was thinking to myself, um, I think the sisters can take care of the sisters, all right? When it comes to, like, modesty, all right? 
you know, I feel, you know, I guess for these uh, modelists, none of them go swimming. None of the women do. They got to wear these long dresses in the summertime. It's probably pretty hot. All right. So, like I say, uh, you know, I let the women take care of the women and the boys. All right. You got you to dress mod modestly as well. And I'm all about that because God made women smoking hot and men smoking hot if you're a woman. All right. So, anyways, I, I, don't, I don't really have much to say about that. Uh, let's keep going here. I'll rewind it a bit. Beard, honey, beard's nothing more than pride. You're not going to be dipped in Holy Ghost oil and run around looking like the world. I just caught that. Did he just say, if you're honey? <laughs> beard, honey, beard's nothing more than pride. You're not going to be dipped in Holy Ghost oil and run around looking like the world. We don't need beards, we need more oil, we need more chill ashes, we need more people in an altar, we need more prayer rooms, we need more people digging into the things of God. You can look in the recipe of anointing, you'll never find beards, Brother Epley. You can look in the recipe of anointing, you're never going to find television. You can look at the recipe of anointing, and you're not going to find compromise. You can look in the recipe of anointing, and women are going to be covering their knees. You can look in the recipe of anointing, and men are still going to look like men, and women are still going to look like women. Somewhere, Joe Ash, you better protect the oil. It's oh, I never have to watch that again. All right, so when he says somewhere, Joe Hash, you're going to protect the oil, literally, I don't know. It'd be an interesting statistic to find out how many times he said Joe Hash and the oil out of that one verse over the whole entire, I think, for as far as I understand, it's probably an over an hour. He just started screaming Joe Hash and the oil. I think in this group, I think the, the louder he screams and the more he makes movements, it's like the more anointed he is or something like that I, it's hard to really follow like when you're dealing with all right so here we go praise the lord our hope is in the lord praise the lord all right here we go forgive me <laughs> that was a, this is a very difficult video for me is you know what there's a sadness that comes over me is like those poor people inside of this you imagine a young girl being born into that sect or a young man you know you got to follow all these rules and you know, there's freedom in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's life, and life more abundantly. You know, these poor women can't even go swimming. Like, it's unbelievable. All right. All right, so... Then... Okay, so then came together unto them the Pharisees. I get called Pharisee all the time. And certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem, and when they saw some of these disciples eat bread and def defiled what that it is to say was unwashed hands they found fault for the pharisees and all the jews except they wash their hands oft eat not holding the traditions of the elders there it is there the traditions we're looking at that today and when they came from the market except they wash they eat not and many other things there be which they had received to hold as the washing of cups and pots brazen vessels and of table. All right, so if you don't understand what I'm talking about, all right? So in the Old Testament, Jesus, it was ceremonial washing before you ate because back then they didn't have microscopes, all right? And God knows that there's germs. So God made it a commandment in part of the Leviticus. There's a lot of people that follow these traditions to this day. For example, Leviticus 11 with the pork, okay, and hand washing. And uh, there's Jewish roots movements and Old Testament. Anyways, you know, you know, there, and there's a lot of people. For an example, this whole idea of shaving your head. I, you come across this with the Mormons? No, the, no, sorry, forgive me. The Jehovah Witnesses. All right. So they believe that Jesus was just some out of the God. They have what's called the New World Translation. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was a God. Okay. Now they all keep their face shaven. And then if you go into the Seventh Day Adventists, for an example, Ellen G. White followers, uh, they have the dietary restrictions as well as it. 
unless you're going to church on Sunday, you've taken the mark of the beast and you're going to burn in hell for eternity. But they don't believe in burning in hell for eternity because they don't believe in hell. Um, and then, of course, we have the seventh day the Mormons. All right. So, and I think even the Jehovah Witnesses, I think one of them don't they don't drink pop or something. They don't drink caffeine. I think maybe that was the Mormons. I'm not sure. All right. So this all these traditions of man. Well, to be able, Christianity is so simple, all right? God just wants us to walk in obedience and humbleness to him, okay? Love one another, do unto others as we'd have them do unto us. Simple Christianity. All right. And when they came from the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be which they have received to hold, and the washing cups and the pots, brazen, brazen vessels, and of the tables... Then the Pharisees and scribes ask him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered them and said unto them, Well, half eth. One second. Esaias prophesied. Oh, that must be a prophet. Of you hypocrites, as are written. Isaiah. <laughs> Forgive me. As it was written, the people honoreth me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. How it? Okay, so there it is. That was a prophecy. Number six again. He answered them and said to them, Why has he, yes, Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites? As it is written, the people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are from far me. How it be by, how it in vain do they worship me? Teaching the doctrines, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Okay. For laying aside the commandments of God, he holds traditions of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like the things he do. And he said unto thee, Full, ye, full well ye reject the commandments of God, that ye may kept your own traditions. Okay, these are traditions. When this guy is saying you got to have a shaved face, don't drink caffeine, or whatever, whatever commandments they've come up with in their imaginations, all right? And somehow claiming this is from God, okay? Like Jesus couldn't even preach in that church or any of the disciples or anyone that's a Christian because they're a sect, all right? And he said unto thee, Full well you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your own traditions. For Moses said, You honor thy father and thy mother, and who has cursed his father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban that he, that is Corban that it say a gift, but whoever thou mightst be proven by me, he shall be free. And he shall suffer no more, no more to what do aught the father and his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your traditions that you may have delivered, and many such things do ye. Let's keep going. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understandeth. All right? There is nothing from without a man that entered into him can defile him, but the things that come out of him, those are that they defile the men. I pray the Lord bless you, God. <laughs> Forgive me, it's, it's, it's the morning time here in Canada Land, eh? All right, we'll move on to another one. I pray for everyone inside of that horrible church, and uh, we pray that the Lord set them free, free from the shackles of men's traditions. You know, and these poor guy, the guy that I started with, that he's having nightmares. He thinks, you know, this poor guy, he's got a a beard you know it really is quite amazing there's other sects that will say that if you don't have a beard you're not going to heaven so like you know it is for freedom christ has set us free from the shackles of men <laughs> i pray the lord bless you we'll move on and have a great day my lord bless you keep you strong in the faith and always remember my brother john loves you bye